This is Real Generational Wealth. Live from Southern California, this is Abby, Espy, and Jen. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to Real Generational Wealth, where we have over 50 years of combined experience making sure you and your family always have a place to call home. So in the last several episodes, we walked you through the whole buying process from beginning to end because we want to make you a homeowner this year. But today, we want to give you a firsthand look at some of the best and worst moments of representing our buyer's clients. So in the comments, let us know where you're watching from. And if you're catching us live, hashtag live. If you're catching us on the replay, hashtag replay. What's up, Abby? You're you're not in the studio. You're you're somewhere <laughs> else today. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Um we're staying we're staying in Aulani Resort in um Hawaii in the Koalina area. Nice. Um, nice. I have a lot of um people asking me, oh, you know, how come you guys are in Hawaii? There's COVID. Um, actually, this is our timeshare, the Disney Resort. We're Disney Vacation Club members. So if we don't use it, we're going to lose our points. And it's almost like $500 a night to stay here. So we're like, let's just use it. Yeah. So um, coming here, it, we thought it was going to be pretty cumbersome. Um, but it's it's pretty easy. The day before we, we flew out, uh, we all took COVID tests. And then uh, once you take a COVID test with a partner or with a recognized partner by Hawaii, um, you just have to upload the test results. You usually get it within five hours. And then when when you fly, just make sure you wear your mask. And then when you check in, uh, once you arrive in Hawaii, then um, I, they just have to see your negative tests already uploaded. And, or you can show them that you have a printout that shows a negative test. So any kids over five years old have to take it. So my seven-year-old had to take it. She didn't like it. So, yeah, so yeah, um, wow. Maya didn't like it because it's the PCR test. So the rapid test, they just you know go in here, but the PCR test, they go all the way in. Uh -huh. yeah. wow. she, didn't like, she didn't like it, but um, for her, it was worth it. We're here for like 10 days. Um, awesome. yeah, just relaxing. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So how about you guys? What's going on with you guys? <laughs> I'm busy. I'm super busy, crazy mm -hmm. busy, but, but good. It's always, yeah. it's always good to be busy. It's oh, so, to get very busy. Yeah. So today we're, we're talking about our previous experience with buyers, right? So SB, why don't you tell me, um, your experience or like an, uh, something that stood out in your past uh, buyer transactions? Well, the one that I wanted to share today, it's, um, it's a story about a first time home buyer. You know, this happened to me when way back in the late nineties, you know, when I was doing real estate and loans at the same time, during that time, you don't need an NMLS. You just need a real estate license. So oh, wow. uh, I had an edge from the other agents because I can do both and I understand on both, right? So um, in, the, in the late 1990s, it was also the same as we have now. The market is also a multiple offer scenario. So mm -hmm. um, I had a, the, my first time home buyer was recommended to me. It was referred to me by a friend of mine and um, we got him qualified and then we got into escrow. So the only thing is that the listing was, um, the, the seller was um, passed away. It was an older guy. He passed away and uh, he was living by himself in the house. And the the person who is the SPA, who is the, um, how do you call it, specific power of attorney for that transaction for him or represented him was a daughter who came out from, um, who flew from another state. So, of course, she was just kind of like um, edgy, you know, uh, the house was overwhelming. It was falling apart. In other words, the house was, it, it was in okay condition. It's just that there's too much stuff in the house, you know. Oh. 
So if you can imagine, you know, retirees when they are get old and they're living by themselves, usually the house get into really in a shamble, you know, it's not taken care of. So yeah, been there for 20 plus years. Yeah, right. So um, what happened is that, you know, during the closing, when we were about a week before the closing, the funding of the loan got uh, halted. You know, there was a, there was a condition on the funding that uh, needed to be submitted, and it was uh, the seller's termite clearance. You know, because during that time, the seller still delivers Section One clearance um, prior to closing closing the escrow. And um, at that time, I, uh, unfortunately, I have a broker that got a big ego and uh, mm -hmm. a newer agent, you know, that was just following the broker. So he was pushing, he was pushing, and uh, it was a Friday. He need to get it closed. And meanwhile, my buyer also was ready to move in by Saturday. He, they Usually they work during the week and you know, they prepare to move in during the weekend. So by three o'clock that Friday, we closed escrow. Okay. So that was good. The only thing is that when my buyer moved in the following day, uh, mid afternoon, he calls me and he said, SP, we have a problem. And I said, why? Never good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were moving in our stuff and one of the sidings in the garage fell off. And I said, well, what? Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of pellets that fell with it. You know, all these uh, termite pellets. Mm. You know, dry wood termite usually has so many pellets. Yeah. And I said, well, maybe it was an old one. You know, it's just uh, us it's usual that you have old pellets there that still remain. I said, well, you know, no, there's some stuff that's moving there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I said, oh my gosh. And good thing, because I did not send the clearance. Um, oh, no, the termite, that termite guy did not send the clearance yet. Remember? I was telling you there was no clearance. But uh, we closed escrow. So I was able to document that, that there's no termite clearance yet, and we, we closed escrow. So I called the termite company, and then they checked. And indeed, we need to fumigate. So there was a big commotion, of course, with the selling agent because it was a seller's market at that time. They don't want to do anything, you know. And um, then meanwhile, my broker at that time says, you know, see how you can sell it nicely and you know, just be cordial with each other and all that. And maybe you can just talk to your buyer and see how you can just pacify him. And I said, well, no, I'm not going to do that. And so I, I was the one who was talking to the broker and I said, well, it's in the contract. You don't have a termite clearance. Mm -hmm. And yes. so he was making too much noise and I said, it's in the contract. You know, we need to get this cleared. Yeah. And uh, so in short, we got a fumigation, you know, done. And, um, you know, it was an inconvenience for my buyer, right? Because they cannot unpack. They have to fumigate mm -hmm. first. So it was a, draw, a setback for him too. But in short, you know, we were able to do it. And guess who paid? It's not the seller. It's no. the broker who did it. He had to pay it because, you know, it was he. And I documented that, that he was the one who was pushing it to close without the termite clearance. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that was an experience. Yeah, you were working in your buyer's best interest instead right. of... So, broke? so you know, especially now that we are, you know, we are we have minimal um, chance to really inspect and be there in the prop in the property. It's really really important that you have an agent that looks after your your um, you know your sake, your interest, yeah. and yeah. you know uh, that the agent really knows how far they could go. You know, mm -hmm. um, except you know if if. You have you are a buyer and you think that you can do it yourself, or you just go with any other agent, depending on you know, without really investigating if that agent is really competent, then you can miss out on little things like that, and that's not little because that was at that time thirty five hundred dollars is really a lot, you know. That's yeah, cool. yeah. <laughs> that's monthly payment for my client. <laughs> Yeah, so how about you, Jen? Any crazy things that you've done so far? I know you're a million dollar closer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want to piggyback just off of what you said 
how it's it's like some buyers just go with just any agent, right? Like I, uh -huh. there's a friend of mine who was supposed to use her family friend as an agent and they were mm -hmm. newer and mm -hmm. they kind of wanted to help them out or whatever. Yeah, like a, on. a year and a half ago. And I was like, okay, that's mm -hmm. fine. Look, I'm here. If you need any help, I, I'll help you. Um, so she went, she was supposed to go with a family friend and I, I mm -hmm. saw her again, I don't know, a year after that. And I was like, Hey, how's it going? And she was just like, Oh, we just opened escrow. I was like, Oh, that's awesome. Not, and she actually said they didn't use the family friend. They decided to go with the listing agent. They oh, were wow. tired of <laughs> okay. moving out on offers. Uh, uh -huh. They've been searching for six, seven months. And the reason I want to say this story is because I know there are a ton of buyers out there who are probably getting tired of losing out on your offers, but do not go with the listing agent. And I yeah. say this because she called. And so, well, I told her, I was like, look, if you, if you need any help, give me a call. Let me know. Mm -hmm. And I want to say three weeks later, she called me basically crying. Um, she did her inspections and there was a lot of stuff wrong with the house. And they basically asked the seller, hey, can you do this? Can you fix that? And, and they wouldn't give her a dime. Mm -hmm. And she called me. Because there's no one representing her. Exactly. She was like, I, I feel like he's bullying me. He's not helping me. And I was like, well, this is this is the problem with going to the listing agent. The seller was their, was their client the first. First client, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It is not possible for an agent to equally represent both sides of a transaction. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you have an agent that's going to protect you as a buyer and, and your best interest to to make sure that you're you're taken care of and your termite is taken care of and <laughs> yeah. so on and so forth. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that was just a quick thing. But I, there was one story I want to talk about was um, my $3 million deal that I did last year in the Hollywood Hills. Oh wow! Um, yeah. I like to hear that was, one. <laughs> it was one of the most stressful deals, and I think there is someone famous. He hashtag <laughs> live there, so babe, I know you're watching. But that was probably the most stressful month of last year. Um, uh -huh. I was, I don't know. I vented to him every day, every hour, of every day. So the story of these clients, they were actually, they no, sorry, they're originally from Michigan, and mm -hmm. he was looking for a place for his son to buy. Uh, this was actually two years ago. We couldn't find anything. He decided, I put him in a rental in the Bridge Street in the Hollywood Hills. Mm -hmm. He was there for well, a couple the years. This, yeah, in the Bridge Street. So that's the seller Keanu of that house. Lives. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's where Keanu Reeves lives. That's where, mm -hmm. where a lot of the <laughs> a lot I don't of them live there. <laughs> I don't stop him or anything. I just know where he lives. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so we wanted to stay in the Bridge Street, but prices went up. So anyway, we yeah. uh, I spent a couple of days showing the properties and there was just this one that he absolutely fell in love with. So it's, again, it's for the son, right? Um, and it's also his first home, but most of the negotiations with his dad. So his dad's taking care of this. Mm -hmm. So I'm on the phone with the dad. We're about to write the offer. And he's like, look, I want to make sure that all the furniture is included. And, and that's actually fairly common with multi-million dollar deals. Yeah. Um, furniture, art, all of that is mm -hmm. Was fully furnished there mm -hmm. was a couch there was a bed in the master bedroom i think the other bedrooms didn't have anything but there was a, a grand piano mm -hmm. i think if there's a few of you watching you must have seen it on my stories because every time i went in the house i i played it but mm -hmm. anyway. <laughs> Ooh, so i went to I, in the contract you know we i think it was listed at 3150 and we offered 27. i told my client they're not gonna they're not gonna sell it to us but we started at 27 went back and forth and we ended up, they accepted that two nine fifty. Now the caveat was, you know, how in the contract there's, there's like little check boxes where you include your refrigerator, yeah. your driver, yeah. all of like yeah. that. And then there's a line for other items. Mm -hmm. I just wrote all furniture. So That's right. it was all included in the sale. Whatever, but we get through inspections and this is not a brand new house. It's actually much older. The, owners, the sellers actually bought it for their son, I think two years prior, and they wanted to expand it and upgrade it. That never happened. Son never even moved in. So it was just kind of sitting empty. Sellers are from New York. Um, so now they're just reselling it. So it's in the hills. There's a ton of termite. There was actually, the first report we got was $4,000 in termite. And so did you guys have to tent? Well, okay. Before we even got to tenting, <laughs> We did, so I, it was probably the most inspectors I had ever coordinated. I had 
the general uh, inspector, roof inspector, course. pool inspector, cool. termite, chimney, mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, geological to do the soils, I don't know, all the stuff. Yeah, yeah because tours. it's in the hills, yeah. And out it came up to maybe a, over $100,000 in repairs. And my buyer was like, his dad was just like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not buying it unless they give us a the credit. So it was another whole negotiation period with the seller. We started at 150 asking for credit, 150,000. And then mm -hmm. they said, no, they said, that's not feasible. Um, we went back, we did a few more inspections. We ended up getting three total termite reports, just to kind of talk about your termite issue. The first mm -hmm. one was 4,000. The second termite company said 14,000 and the third termite company said 24,000. Yeah, it was, well, yeah, well, so the 24,000 included what, complete 20, remodeling 000, right? the steps, but long story short, we got them to accept, to give us a credit for a hundred thousand. So my mm -hmm. buyer's super excited. So now I'm ready to close because this is supposed to be a cash deal. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, we're good. And then the seller's agent calls me and he goes, Hey Jen, what furniture did you want? And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, well, you know, we're going to wrap this up in a couple of weeks. What, what furniture did you want? And I said, I put it in the contract. I wanted all furniture. And then it opened up a whole new thing. And he was like, no, that's not included. There's specific, apparently the couches were super expensive. I don't mm -hmm. know. And, and they said that they wouldn't give up the piano because it's an antique. It's over 200 years old. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, my buyer was like, look, we put it in the contract. They have to honor the contract. Like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, we're talking about the termite, right? Like you yeah. have to honor the contract. Yeah, that's right. It was, it was the seller's agent's fault for missing it. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't mm -hmm. see that it said all furniture. Um, but we went back and forth. We ended up negotiating. It was a few pieces of furniture. Okay, we'll take a few couches and whatever. Um, but for my buyer, it was the principal. And mm -hmm. it was like, hey, take it or leave it. We're, we're buying this house with the furniture or we're not. And um, after some give and take, they said, okay, fine, you can keep all the furniture. And they ended wow, up- Wow, that's good. <laughs> yeah, but they ended up taking the piano in the middle of the night. And- What? Yeah, the sellers took, we went wow. in for a final walkthrough and the sellers took the piano. Um, and we're just like, oh, okay. And it opened up a whole new can of worms. My buyer's like, I'm not closing. That's it, we're, we're not closing, we're canceling. I was like, we removed all our contingencies. Like you're gonna lose $90,000. And yeah, no, he was, he was ready to just walk away. Um, but it's the principle. Because yes, it was the principle. It wasn't their fault. Yeah. 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 That's what he was looking at. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, it was a lot of back and forth um, with the agent, with the seller's agent. And he was he was a jerk to me. <laughs> but um, <laughs> after a lot of negotiation, I fought for my buyer and they ended up giving my buyer credit. So mm -hmm. we got a credit. We were able to close. And, and then we closed. And I celebrated a nice close. But I, again, it was, it was stressful. So it, oh, wow. I. Like a, I mean, a lot of people think just because it's you know it's a big deal and it's cash it's it's so easy it's it's not it, it no. gets, every situation is harder and every uh -huh. situation is different in its own sense so. it is yeah, every transaction is different yeah. you always mm -hmm. learn something in every deal mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and you won't know it not until it comes you know so that's the reason why we always say you know you need to know how to roll it with roll with the punches and you need to be able to have whatever the last chip or the last ace that you have is the wild card. <laughs> also, like, that's okay. the last thing. Thank you, the awesome agent, right? That's, I mean, I, your agent's important. And I, I don't think a lot of people realize that, that they yeah. help, again, yeah. get you what you want, get you what you need. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you don't deal with the stress. <laughs> Right, right. True, that's our job because I think sometimes they don't, they see like the transaction is going through very smoothly and they don't uh -huh. see all the they things that the pumps, it's going on behind. <laughs> yeah, they don't see it. They're just like, oh, this was so easy. Oh my gosh, that was so easy for you to make that money. But you know what? Um, when you guys aren't looking like we're dealing with the inspectors or with the seller's agent and we're arguing on your behalf, but I don't, mm. you know, we tr we just try not to let them see that. Yeah. just yeah. so less yeah. stress for them exactly um, okay so who, who's with us who's with us today oh Anne. Anne is here um if you guys are watching, here. whoever's watching why don't you tell us where you're watching from and then just um if you like our stories just pound on those hearts 
Yeah, send us that. Just like, ow. I, I like, like wow. <laughs> just like Aurora. She loves the ow. I love the ow too. That, no, ow. Aurora <laughs> is said she loves the wow. Oh, we like, love Aurora. <laughs> the wow in the hearts and give us a lot of love. Share yeah, give us love. love, you guys. Share it. <laughs> yeah. And well, if you have any questions, right? You know, the with all these, uh, maybe some people have questions about uh, situations that we can answer for you, you know. Yeah, yeah we'd be happy to answer them for you. And if you don't want to post your question publicly, just feel mm -hmm. free to get in touch with any of us um, uh, through private message or, or um, you can contact us on the numbers um, right here on the screen or send us an email. And everything yeah. is confidential. <laughs> so what about you, Abby? Any oh, any fun um, escrow that you recently closed where the buyer was really no. happy? Not recent, but it was when I first started in real estate. Okay. Uh -huh. um, it was a house that was over a million dollars. It was my first year in real estate. And um, I just graduated from... UCLA and then I, I um, like I mentioned before, I was published and I was really into research. Like I was totally into research and um, and actually I wanted to go to law school. So I, I thought, you know, why don't I practice on real estate instead of going to law school? And this transaction, um, we started off, we started off looking at lower priced homes, but my client wanted something custom. So this home is in Chino Hills and it's in an area like up in the hills. So there's no sewer access. Mm. But uh -huh. um, So I contacted the agent just to get information before I submitted an offer. And um, she, she was like, wow, dear, you sound so young. Oh my gosh. I've been in this business for 30 years and oh yeah, and you did that. <laughs> you're, you're in good hands. Just let me handle everything. And I was like, uh -huh. hmm. like, I don't really like that. Like, how come she's she's kind of patronizing me a little bit? Because you never know. It's not really the amount of years. It's it's how you conduct the transaction, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, so off the bat, I asked her, okay, is uh, this is in the up in the hills? Is it connected to a sewer line? And she said, yes, it's connected to a sewer line. And when we get there, it's like there's a septic tank there. So <laughs> it was it was septic. Okay, that was like that was. The first faux pas that she she made, and then um, next, you know, we're we're trying to go over the comps and trying to calculate comps. It was difficult because this home, this so this home was priced at one point seven nine nine. It's custom. It has a wine cellar. the 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 seller put in like four hundred thousand dollars worth of upgrades. Like they have a pool and a pool house and a theater system in the pool house. So they had they had the works and it's it's beautiful. My my client's wife is an opera singer and she's really into art and this was the only house that she loved. So she loved it. Um, anyway, so we're trying to calculate how do you calculate price per square foot, right? How do we submit an offer um, when something is custom? So we're calculating it and then we just based it on recent sold comps and then by price per square foot which is the only way we can quantify really uh, what we should uh, price it at. So we went, we came in, submitted an offer for 1.3 million because the house had been sitting on the market for a while. And um, I noticed that the sellers moved out. So they ended up, they ended up accepting it. Mm -hmm. And now we were in escrow. So, you know, we had, we did the inspections. There was a few inspections that needed to be done. And then also the, the appraiser, whenever the whenever I have a home in escrow, I like to meet with the appraiser and just talk to them and um, try to get the price. If it's the buyer, you shouldn't let a buyer's agent really meet with the appraiser when it's your listing. It should be the listing agent. But this mm -hmm. time I met with the appraiser and I was talking to him. I was like, hey, so, you know, what what do you think? And, and he told me that I needed to review the blueprints because mm -hmm. the the square footage was off. Mm -hmm. And like the square footage, it says that the source is from the builder based on, on the information on the MLS. It says, no, the source is from not the builder, the assessor's office. Exactly. Yeah. So, 
yeah, so I believe them. Uh, so I believe Charles, like, okay, we, we're going to base it off of what the assessor said. But the appraiser was like, no, you need to review. Um, you know, so we did review the blueprints and he was like, it's, I measured it. It's less than what it stated on the MLS. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, that's what we based our, because my, my client, he's really into numbers. And so that's what we based our, our price on. And um, because she, because first she told us that it was sewer, a public sewer and not septic. And then she, and then she also stated on the MLS that the source it's was the, the um, assessor's office and not the seller. I told her, I told her, you know what, you better, um, you know, based on it, I, I spent the whole night writing this email. It was like with legalese. And I just told her, you misrepresented the facts from us from the beginning, all this stuff. And mm -hmm. oh my gosh, it was so funny. Like they had, they hired a legal team to do the chat. <laughs> to deal with you? Yeah, to, de to deal with me and my client. And then, <laughs> well, me and my client were busting up laughing. Like I told him, I was like, hey, they hired a, a, a legal team. Oh, wow. And the, um, the seller has to spend money on a legal team. Like he has a legal team on retainer. And um, yeah, we we're just, we we're just laughing. I mean, it's because she did, she did in fact misrepresent the facts from the get go. Because we, had we known that the source of the square footage was from the seller, we would have investigated further and reviewed the blueprints and, and uh, figured out the square, like the accurate square footage. So yeah. what happened was, we told them to lower the price by 50,000. So they, you know, we went back and forth. I was like, go contact your legal team and see what they say. Um, and then, um, so they lowered it by 50,000. And then we got back another 20,000 for nonsense repairs. Like I was like, oh, there's a chip in here. And there's, so I really like tried my best for my buyer. And, and um, he was, he was really happy. He's, um, I haven't kept in touch with them lately, but he's, he's, uh, he was like, wow, Abby, you know, you're, you're such a good agent. And he didn't know that I just started. It was mm -hmm. like, it was one of my, it was one of my first deals. And um, mm -hmm. I just chuckle when I think about it because they had to hire a, an entire legal team for the seller because the, because the seller's agent because was pretty, of the questions you have yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's pretty reckless and um, just yeah. what she did, but yeah, that's negligence. I, yeah, I don't always, I'm not always like that. And the transactions aren't always like that. But mm -hmm. from the get go, she was like, Oh, dear, you know, you're you sound like, uh, you sound like a little girl, or you sound really I young. I don't know how to sound aggressive, or, mm -hmm. you know, it's just my personality, but like, this is my personality. But yeah. I kind of took offense to it all from the get go. Yeah. Clearly yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, you know, from the get go, I just didn't have a good feeling about her. So I was kind of like, okay, let me, let me see what I can do. And yeah, it was my, my buyer's very happy. They're not going to be moving. They have a wine. They have, what is that? A vineyard in their mm -hmm. house and oh, every, wow. a wine cellar and every, it's a beautiful home. I think it's, it's probably worth more than uh, two and a half million now. Probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Oh, we have some questions. Because, especially if it has acreage in it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it various. Two acres. So. Oh wow. Uh -huh. That's All right. Good. So we have a few good questions. So Fair okay. is asking, what would you say are the top three advantages a client will have working with an agent rather than doing it on their own? You Who wants to ask? Oh, I mean. I, I mean, I, I think we all kind of said it earlier was definitely the number one is you have someone fighting for you. You got yeah. someone in your corner who's going to take care of you, who's going to basically fight for your best interest at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like saying, do you want to pull your teeth or do you want a dentist to pull your teeth? <laughs> You see, I even say teeth. Do you want that you pull your tooth or you want the dentist? To pull it for you yeah so I mean, yeah at the end of the day you want to trust the professional right you wouldn't right. go to a heart surgeon and ask him to sell your house you ask him to do surgery on your heart yeah, Plus, this is the biggest, yeah this is the biggest transaction you'll probably ever have in your life 
So mm -hmm. you want to have someone who's an expert in the field assisting you and fighting for your your best interest and just making sure that you know all of your options. Because even even when I was first, uh, when we first bought our home, we didn't know all the options and we didn't know our like the strength of our position. So mm -hmm. it really helps when you have an agent working on your side. Yeah. Um, so I would say first is that you are working, it's better to work with somebody who is a professional. And number two, somebody who is proactive, you know, notice if they're returning calls, if they are, they are proactive in explaining, you know, are they in the teaching mode or the coaching mode, or are you like a number? So you, during the beginning of the transaction, even during the beginning of the rapport, you will notice that. You know, because there are some agents who would just be looking at, um, you know, they're concentrating on production rather than a uh, service. So, That's true. yeah, you know, yeah. So you, you want to make sure that you have somebody who is going to be patient with you, yeah. you know, because especially for first time home buyers, you know, they need they need to be they need to be heard. And they need to be coached. You know, you cannot just say, oh, jump because I told you to jump. Yeah. You need to know why. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, as, a, as, as anybody, even if I, I would say, yeah, mostly first time home buyers, but any buyers, there's a lot of questions, right? You're going to come across a lot of questions. Yeah. The one thing we always say is every transaction is different, right? So jumping mm -hmm. is always there. There's a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. and you definitely want to be guided by the right person. Yeah. <laughs> I would also say um, get an agent that works full time as an agent. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some that work full time and and do real estate, but um, I would say that if you have someone doing real estate full time, you you know they're knowledgeable and they'll know answers right away instead of like, oh, let me ask my broker or let me yeah. you know let me figure that out for you. Usually, they'll know. Mm -hmm. Off the top, off the top of their head, like what the answer will be, and um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. So it is, you know, we have a saying now during this time, okay, where you have all the online digital uh, search and all that. I say to clients, it's easy to find a house, but to get to the right house that you want, you know, is a different story. You know, you need a professional who's going to help you do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, because uh, there are some some agents would say, oh, this is the best one for you. I think this is the best one. And you just go ahead and listen because I know this is the best one for you. No, even if you're a first time home buyer, it's still your money. It's still you who's going to live there. So my logic is it's my duty to tell you my professional advice, you know, but it's still your final decision whether that is something that you want to do or not because you're still the client you're still the one who's going to shell out the money and you're still going to be the one to pay to pay everyone you know yeah. so that that's the most important thing you know for that's the buyers. You love where you live right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you shouldn't have to settle and, and your agents i mean there's another question there that asks how you want to vet an agent you want to make sure that that agent is gonna work around you Right, mm -hmm. your needs. and listen, listen to your needs. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, because sometimes the buyer says, "Oh, you know, I'm showing twenty houses, ten houses." Well, probably it's because that agent is not really listening to what you're asking. <laughs> you you want, you know, he's <laughs> just showing you all the, the all the properties just to make sure oh, that you feel yeah. like, you know, especially with this situation right now where everybody is just have to be um, signing a PID and showing your um, pre-approval loan and your proof of funds every time that you show a property, okay? It is very important that your agent listens to what you're looking for and what you need. That way, the houses that you're going to look at are houses that really, number one, you can afford, number two, you like, and number three is that, you know, it, it, it is in the right location that you wanted, to, you wanted right? Yeah, exactly. so the bottom line is that it is it is what you want. So 
sometimes we make an offer or we would intend to make an offer. And then finally, as you investigate, because before you make an offer, you have to make a property profile. You have to search. You have to go to the title company, make sure that that doesn't have a lien. And, you know, you, you know exactly what the position of the seller is as much as possible. And you research with a listing agent, right? But yeah. during that time, sometimes you find some little things here and there and some red, red flags. And if the client decides that, oh, you know what, I think it's not something for me, it's still okay. Because as I said earlier, you know, it is their house, it's their choice, and it's their money. So you still have to cater to what, you know, and they should not feel bad about that. And the agent should not make you feel bad about that. Yeah. That's you know? true. Yeah. yeah. Like when your clients, when they, if they want to counsel, it's like, okay, like, no questions asked. Let's just cancel because there might be something that they see, you know, that they don't like in the house and they have to live with that every day. Mm -hmm. So they want to cancel, then, you know, we have to do what's best for you. So no problem. Yeah. So you need an agent that's really going to be on your side um, during the transaction. Mm -hmm. um, SB, you mentioned a PED form. Can you tell our viewers what a PED form is in case they're, they don't know? No, well, that's the acronym I don't memorize. P E A D. <laughs> it's a form actually that you have to get your buyer to sign. And it is about the COVID, you know, that uh, the buyer is acknowledging that um, he does not have any, any kind of uh, symptoms, you know, just like any place that you go to right now, especially when you go to the hospital or in offices, mm -hmm. you know, you have to sign a paper saying that, oh, I don't have any symptoms. I don't have any uh, contact with uh, somebody who had COVID or things like that. It's a disclosure telling the seller that you are aware of all the uh, precautions of the COVID and that you are entering that property and you're not bringing in any kind of hazard in the property. So you, yeah. you are going to come in with a mask, with all the sanitizer and all that. And you and your agent knows that you have to make sure that you sanitize the place before you go, you know, before you leave the property. So that's just a disclosure. And it has to be sent to every single address that you are going to. You cannot just have a blanket paid, you know. It is a feed that will have an address. So the listing agent will have to look at that and they have to give that to the seller. So that is a process. It's not like before that, oh, okay, let's take a look at the house. And, yeah. you, you know, you can go from one house to another and just use lockbox. Change. We don't have that anymore. Uh, there's good thing and hard thing about it because it's hard. You know, it's a lot of work for the, for the buyer's agent and also for the listing agent. But the good thing about the positive thing about what is happening right now is that you're only showing the property to the right prospective buyer that is qualified and that is already, you know, um, uh, screened based on the loan. So that, you know, when they make an offer, you pretty much know that this is, these people can, can close. Right. That's true because a lot of listings nowadays, they, before you even see it, they ask for a pre approval. Mm -hmm. Or the yeah. DU approval, uh, even approval of funds, even before seeing the place. Yeah. So they want to ensure that you're qualified and you're serious about buying the home, and you're not just a looky loo, you know, just looking at the house. Yeah. So. <laughs> there was yeah. a question in there uh, that we have in the comments, guys, from Marcel, who's watching from Chicago. What's oh, the hi. most? Well, what's the most? missed or i guess what's the biggest misconception about agents i can go i can rant about this oh but. you can rattle all of that all day <laughs> that's a sad part yeah i i do want to say i mean i can't I, I can't even count how many people have called me in the last year and said jen i just watched selling sunset i want to become a real estate agent <laughs> uh -huh. yes uh, the biggest misconception is that it's all glitz and glamour and big commission checks Mm -hmm. it's not it's i mean with commission checks i mean when your well, broker has to get a cut and i mean you have so many fees that go that you have to take care of and, and mind you these buyers that we work with we don't just 
or we don't get paid from the beginning, right? You don't get paid until the property closes. So you could spend yeah. months looking for a house and then- Or you even want, a year. Yeah, even up to a year. And yeah. we don't get paid anything during that whole lifetime. And not all the buyers are going to buy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And it's, it's not all glitz and glamour. It is it's, uh, it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of continuing education. You have to make sure that you're always on top of what's going on. You know, and you're uh, it's, you know, mm -hmm. like you're working nights and weekends. You're on the Abby's in Hawaii right now. And she, I've been she's working. working. She's been, having, I've been working every yeah. day since I've gotten to Hawaii. Like this is pretty, it's basically a working vacation every mm -hmm. day. It's like, okay, I have a new listing that I need to market or I have buyers that want to see homes. So I've been coordinating um, here. Thank goodness for technology. I'm able to work while I'm here. I mean, I love it. You know, I love, I love what I do. So for me, it doesn't really seem like work. Um, I mean, we're here relaxing, but I, I also love helping my clients. So I don't, I really don't mind at all. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have any other misconceptions or do you, that you can think of? I mean, I, I think that was probably the biggest thing is that everybody thinks that it's, that it's easy, you know, but just to mm -hmm. kind of cap off the, even a vacation is not really vacation, but it's also because we don't look at this like work, you know, we love what we do. We care about our clients. And ultimately, I mean, my favorite part is, is giving people keys. Right. Giving people keys. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can I, I would like to add a little bit more on what you're saying, Jen. You know, it's not it's not the only that, but um there's a lot of uh impression that realtors are um just after the money, very materialistic, very unfilling, they just want to get a deal, you know, even with this Prop 19, they keep on saying, oh, it's the realtors because the realtors were the one who passed it because they want the real uh, to sell houses. And it's not true. I don't think, I, I don't look at it that way, you know. Um, unfortunately, there are people, there are realtors, just like there are lawyers and there are dentists and there are some doctors who are, who are not really... Um, that uh you know uh, sincere about their job they're more materialistic and they're more into you know just looking after what they can get but yeah. um, if you pick the right agents you know there's a lot of agents there who are hard workers yeah you know, they're hard workers they they just uh, try to do the best they can and that's the people that you want to work with you know who are dil due diligence due diligence is important you know people who are um, uh, open to finding out for for you. If you have a question, they don't know. They find out for you. They don't just brush you off just because you know they're the agent and you're the buyer or the seller. And just listen to me and follow my rules. Just follow follow my lead. <laughs> but if you find um, the real professional ones, they're the ones that really work hard and make sure that they're on top of things. You know, and of course they're just people too, just like uh, everybody else. But um, in the bottom line is that realtors are a lot of times they are the um, they are like the unsung hero because we are the ones who place them in a property that so many years after are making one million, two million dollars profit. And we don't turn around and say, well, where's my share? Where's my share? <laughs> You know, so we make it happen to them. And, you know, some some of them remember you, how you got your first home, and some of them don't, right? So yeah. that's a, that's the only thing. But, um, yeah, really realtors, professional realtors that really put their job on their heart, make sure that you put, you that, they, that you are placed in the right spot or the right dream home that you wanted. That's so well put, SB. That's yeah. so true. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's, that's very true because uh -huh. there there are some some that don't put their clients best interests forward and um and i mean that's that's why i got into real estate like i wanted to help people build wealth and then just the ones that don't think they can my favorite are the ones that don't think they deserve to have a house or they don't think that they can get a house because they have bad credit or they had a bankruptcy or foreclosure mm -hmm. 
and they're kind of down about uh, real estate and about home ownership. Those are, to me, those are the most satisfying. Um, those are the most uh, satisfying deals because yeah, those are the most grateful ones, you know. When, yes, when, it's like yeah. Well, you know, it was it was challenging, but once you overcome those challenges, then it's well worth it once they get a home. So we have some other questions here. Oh, thanks, Marcel. Marcel has another question. <laughs> Why did you all choose this career? <laughs> I think we. I think we kind of touched upon it in the first episode, but why did why you did choose this career? Oh, well, I mean, you I mean, you kind of just mentioned it. You said that. Okay, so I chose this career because um, I had a bad experience with my first realtor. I think I mentioned it in the first episode. Every house was, don't let this go. Don't let this go, Abby. And I would look around like, oh my gosh, these places are awful that you're showing us. <laughs> uh -huh. Like, yes, we want to let it go. We don't want these homes. And we were just so confused. Like, it, it felt like we were being forced. Yeah. And had we listened and, you know, just go gone with the flow or um, listened to her, we would have we would have lost money. So it's mm -hmm. really important. I felt that it's really important to have an agent that's working in your best interest. They, mm -hmm. you know, we're not we're not principals on the deal. It's our clients that are the principals. They make all the decisions and we're here to guide them towards making the right decision. And in our first experience with me and my husband, it just felt like that wasn't the case. Yeah. And, you know, like with you ladies, I'm, I'm sure you put your clients first too. Like you're not that type. And later on, we found out that it was, um, she was motivated by money or driven by money. And um, that was just unfortunate. So we learned our lesson. And now it's like, I really like, I want to go out there and help people so they don't experience something like that because it can make or break someone's wealth. Like if they choose the wrong house or if they make the wrong decision. So I just wanted, so that's why I got into it because. I don't want people to make bad decisions. I want to help people build wealth. And I want them to realize that the dream of home, home ownership is real. Like you mm -hmm. can accomplish that. So mm -hmm. that's yeah. my answer. How about you ladies? <laughs> yeah, for me, I decided to um, get my real estate license because I was having my first child. And I said, okay, well, if I become a realtor, then I, it's not a nine to five job. You know, uh, I will have flexibility. And uh, so I, I did that and I enjoyed it, you know. So I used to close escrow or no, I, I had one, one offer I had to make because it was like a crazy, crazy year too. You know, that's 2001. I had to make an offer for my buyer that kept on missing out on a multiple offer right so mm -hmm. i was in malaga in spain with my mom and oh. my son wow. <laughs> and she called me we had cell phones at that time right so mm -hmm. she called me and she said i found, i saw this house that the seller just put a sign in front of your yard and i want the house and i said okay so I used my people, you know, I, I had some, uh, I have some network people that were in the ground, in other words, yeah. and uh, in short, we made an offer and we got it accepted. And, um, and when we came back, I have an escrow that was go ongoing. Nice. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. And that was a Christmas season. You know, we were, we were there for uh, a Christmas, uh, my Christ Christmas vacation for my son. Yeah. So... Yeah, the, the flexibility I like, you know, um, I don't mind working long hours if I can take off and uh, be someplace. I have not missed uh, doctor's appointments for my son or PTA and the same thing with me, you know. So um, I am used to working at home. So it's not a big deal for me working because it's COVID. I'm working at home. I'm, I'm used to staying home and do some work. Yeah. I wish that was the case for me. I feel like um, I need to spend more time with my kids. I'm always in the office. Like I'm in the uh, office until yeah. seven usually, but it's because I'm just, I'm starting my, I just started yeah, just realty and yeah. I have to be the one to grow it. And mm -hmm. that's a bigger it. responsibility. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. How about Come you, Jen? You're the youngest. 
<laughs> I'm not the youngest, and I whenever I tell people that this is my 12th year, like they people still think they're like, oh well, when did you start when you were 12? I'm like, no. <laughs> um, I started out of college, and I actually I landed in real estate because initially it was just a job, and it was when the market crashed, the economy crashed, and no one was hiring. So that's that's how I landed into it. But why did I choose it as a career is after a few years in real estate, I found those agents that were just about the money. I found mm -hmm. those agents that didn't care about their clients. Yeah. I found those agents who were crooked and, you know, it, the dollar sign was what mattered. And they didn't yeah. write. And, and not even just for the client, but uh, paperwork. You know, people who forged and, and so many crooked stuff. And I didn't mm -hmm. like it. Yeah, I, yeah. I needed that. That's a sad I, part about it. You know, we are yeah. among, you know, we are swimming among all those, the whole gamut. And, and yeah. those agents are the ones that give us a bad rep, you know, and, yeah. and that's why I was like, you know, I, I can change this. And even though it's probably one client at a time, one house at a time, that's why I was like, I, I'm going to do this. And so that's why I chose to do this as a career. Um, mm -hmm. And I, and I think over the years, I've, it's become a passion to really make homeowners out of people um i said earlier i like my favorite part is giving the keys i will jump through fire and <laughs> for my clients best part yeah. is in champagne at the end <laughs> that's right yeah yeah awesome. i do want to call out this one last question yeah. before we wrap up uh because it's oliver hi, <laughs> hey, oliver. hi oliver um yeah. he asked Thank the question you for watching. he said um it's a relationship between the buyer and agent can I switch realtors if I'm working with one that is not working out? It depends if they have a buyer's um, agreement, buyer, buyer broker agreement. I've, I've actually never had a client sign it. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've never, I, oh my gosh, me too. I've never, I've never had anyone sign yeah. it because if you don't like me for any reason, okay, you're free, you know, you're free to go wherever you want. Yeah. I mean, I, I give you the utmost, like best of my abilities to give you the best buying experience. And if it doesn't feel, if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. You know, you yeah. can't squish a square in a circle. Mm -hmm. so. You can't force it to like sometimes personalities just don't match or um, yeah, it's just not working out for whatever reason. Then the buyer is free to go wherever they want. Like just like right. Jen, I never, I never have a buyer sign those agreements. That's, mm -hmm. I would think that's like if someone is, is scared like oh you might not like them so they want to guarantee that you'll work with them and they don't want you to work with anyone else mm -hmm. um but yeah, yeah, I'm pretty confident you that explain, uh yeah. if you want to explain the buyer broker agreement for some of our viewers real quick yeah the buyer's agreement is basically saying that oh okay well i'm going to show you properties uh usually there is a time frame for that mm -hmm. you know and um you will say uh, you're going to show all these properties within a certain period of time. And uh, if I showed you one property and then you turn around, go to another agent and buy it, then I have the procuring costs, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I think CAR has been pushing to have that, have that done because there's a lot of litigation or mitigation happening right now with the boards, you know, where there is always a question on who is the procuring cause, you know, because there are some um, people who are also abusing the services of um, agents, you know, where they're going to look at properties and get access to different homes. And then they turn around to their cousin who is a realtor. Oh, yes. And, yeah. You know, and try to get the deal from them and said, OK, so I already will know what I want to buy. You know, just write the offer for me if you give me $10,000, Yeah. you know. So those are things that happens. And um, more and more of that is happening, especially, um, you know, when when we have this kind of market. So CAR developed this buyer um, agent agree agreement. Uh, that's the only thing that the, that's a, the main reason why they put that in, you know. But, Very uh, important to mm -hmm. 
you want to vet your agent early, right? Make sure yeah. it's a good fit from the get go. Yeah. They'll fight, they'll fight with you. They'll fight through everything for you. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But uh, sometimes you know, some, t some people go fall through the cracks and um, you get victimized and there's nothing you can do. You know, yeah. people are still, we, we, even if you have that kind of contract and if you fight for that contract, and you got into a real sour, bitter, um, you know, uh, situation. It's it's pulling out a lot more from you than if you just let it go and move on to the next one. You know, that's true. You know, Very so good. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I hope we answered your question, Oliver. A lot of times, anyway, the buyers just decide that they want to go somewhere else. You know, or sometimes they use four or five agents, you know, that's the reason why. <laughs> so, yeah. So I guess uh, we had a pretty long um, uh, sharing today. Hi, Jen. So to yeah. next week, we're going to take a break. Yes. So to the seller's uh, side, right? Yeah, that basically wraps up our buyer series. Um, again, if you guys have any particular questions about buying your first home or your forever home, either... DM us. Uh, you can also find our previous episodes about getting pre-approved and, and the buying process and whatnot. Um, next week, we're going to take a break. Uh, we won't be here next week, but in two weeks, we will regroup and start talking to you about sellers, the seller's process. So yeah. Yay. Okay. So thank you for watching. I see Aurora and Jennifer here is uh, in and Jay. Thank you for being with us. And um uh, as we say, hashtag live if you are watching us now or hashtag replay if you're watching us later. And uh, <laughs> Let us know where you're watching from. If, even if you're watching on a replay, just yeah. let us know where, where you're from. Yeah. So say and hi feel, to yeah. And feel free to contact us if you need more information. We're always there and uh, you can always be, you know, um, message us here in Facebook or you see our number here in our email. So just go ahead and do that. Okay. So we'd love to help. All right, Thank you guys. You. Have a good rest of your week. Uh-huh. Bye. All right.